Numbers chapter 30 deals with the law concerning vows made by men or women, that if a man makes an oath, he must by law fulfill it. Following through with the vow is so serious that a law had been made to enforce them. And it makes sense that a law would be made to govern vows, because the Lord binds himself to his words, which is both amazing and terrifying. So we also must stand by our words. As it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. So let us also stand by our word. Now, on the flip side, one other thing to point out in our passage is the woman's submission as required by law. Regardless if by her father, if she is not yet married, or if by her husband, if she utters a vow and the man in her life hears it and decides against it, her vow is made void and the Lord releases her from her duty. This demonstration of complete submission is reflective of our submission to Christ as his disciples and especially as the bride of Christ, the church. That even when under the influence of strong passion and emotion, however justified we may feel to do something, let it be that we first consider what God says about it. God being our Father and Christ being the head of the church, let us be quick to submit ourselves to him as comes naturally in our relationship with the Lord. Let it be in light of God being our Father and our privilege as being the bride of Christ that we demonstrate submission by denying ourselves, picking up our crosses daily and following him as it says in Luke chapter 9 verse 23. To me, there is not a more beautiful expression of submission than our Lord's submission in his prayer in the evening and early morning hours before the Lord would be crucified. Under strong passion and fervent earnestness, the Lord asked if there was another way, but desiring to be obedient, even in tremendous inconvenience, he submitted himself to God the Father's will regardless. So as the woman in Numbers chapter 30 must set her goals and desires aside when prompted by father or husband, may we also set aside our personal goals and desires and embrace God's desires and commands first in our lives.